What's up guys and gals and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Orc Marines or something of that nature. In this episode we're trying to retake some planetary defense gun. I hear the sounds of gits running around but in any case we're we're keeping it real right here. I mean we got our armor on, we got like our skulls with the little like olive branchy things going around. Those look a bit more like tentacles or something. I don't know. I was thinking about this the other night. What does a space marine keep in his backpack? Like Nutrigrain bars? things to keep him all fibered up. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't want fiber if I was trapped in this giant suit. But then again, Space Marines have like 700 organs that the rest of us don't have. So I think the case may be that they just kind of like, I don't know, they must just kind of every now and again, steam comes out of their ears and that's the only waste that they exude. It's one of those things that they've never touched on. Let's go ahead and continue on our way because the Imperial Guard are indeed waiting on us. It appears as though we're going to do a bit of walking before we can go anywhere else. They were pointing the fist here. But I don't... Ooh. Hello, Orkies. Appears to be some form of seismic activity attacking. There's the sound of a wog in the distance. Always a bad thing, at least as long as you're not an orc. I mean, if you are an orc, the sound of the wog is a very, very good thing. Supposing it's not a wog fighting another wog, I guess. There's a lot of... is swarming with orcs. Clearing this place will take days. Those guardsmen cannot survive that long. We find a way Reloading. to destroy the gun. That was an odd delay. We must find a way to destroy the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a knob up there. I don't know when we're... Ooh, another goodie box. Yeah, goodie box. Come here. We have a vengeance launcher. From a vengeance launcher. That sounds promising. The Experimental Gryia Pattern Vengeance Launcher is a specialized launcher for magnetized fusion charges which adhere to walls and enemy armor. Mouse 1 to fire, R to detonate. Right. Well then, let's use this for the next couple kills because I feel like it might be entertaining. I'm gonna try and hot swap through weapons. Like, I'm the sort of person that when I play these games, I tend to favor the same weapon just over and over and over again and I never swap them out. It will not be the case in this playthrough. I will absolutely kind of swap through weapons and do random stuff every now and again just to make sure that everybody is seeing what needs to be seen. Now that we've been gifted with the Vengeance Launcher from the Emperor, we can use it to launch our Vengeance at the enemies. And up until now, our Vengeance was very much kind of relegated to ground duty. It was kind of an aura around us, almost like a stink from not bathing. That was our Vengeance. But as it stands now, we can actually project that to other locations. Nice. It didn't seem to do much other than knock... Let's launch one onto somebody. What's that going to do for me? It's on his hand. And there it is. Let me give you a hand. I guess would be the appropriate action movie pun to throw in right there. A couple of orcs left. We've managed to take them. Sure to be something useful. I bet there is. Let's get on up in here. Ooh, Melta charges. Lockdown in effect. Look here, Captain. Melter charges. Put those in the right place, and this whole fortress will come down. We could put the charge on one of the gun shells. Leandros, you do the chapter proud. I like how the entire room, the rest of all the gear is around the edges, but with the Melta bomb, they put it on its own special pedestal right in the middle, just like Melta bomb. Like they were so excited about it that they simply just had to make its own little space like they could worship it every day or so. Which, given the nature of the machine cult, wouldn't surprise me. Now then, back- oh, the orcs have closed ground with me. Let's give them a nade. Soften them up a tiny bit because they're looking a bit odd right now. That's how orcs say hard, they don't actually say the H. And also chimney sweeps don't say H's. They're fundamentally incapable. I'm gonna- eh, I'm not gonna execute him, I don't care that much. Come here, orc. Let me smash you. I actually really, really like the gore effects in this game. It's one of those small little features. Like, I like how you can tell the gore is chunky. Like, there's little bits and stuff in it when it flies around. It's like, oh, that's gnarly. We are getting shot a lot. I mean, I don't really want to rhyme without cause, but getting shot a lot on this spot is definitely 
one of those things that we saw it when we fell down from the atmosphere in this armor. I don't know. I'm just spitting stuff out at this point. I'm spitballing. This is like one of those series that I'm woefully unprepared for. Is he laying on his back shooting at me? Oh, no. It's the other guy's body clipping through his own. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that is interesting. We appear to have crippled him. He needs an orcish wheelchair or something so that he can continue to be combat effective or he's just going to lay there and shoot us until we take him out. In any case, he was definitely adopting an odd posture for an orc. Now that we've got our melt -a bombs oh, it's going to open doors for us. I love it when things open doors for me. I'm fickle like that. You know, sometimes I feel like those melee hits aren't actually landing on me. It seems like they're coming from a long ways away. With this guy over here. Oh, good, I'm out of ammo. What else could go wrong? I'm not going to be able to shoot him properly at all, so let's go ahead and go around. And let's try and rush the elevator and push the button before everybody's on. Oh, it wouldn't let us. Bummer. We've all seen that guy at work. We were trying to get on the elevator and he's like mashing the button like, No, you can't come with me. This is my personal elevator. My lonely elevator ride up to the 8th floor is the only time of day I get alone without my kids screaming at me or my boss screaming at me. Please let me have this. To which I say, No. I shall ride the elevator with you. Plus, we might make frenzies. You never know. Probably not, but it could happen. Let's go back to the Vengeance Launcher here for a bit. And we could use some extra ammo. Oh, this guy right here is about to get bit. Oh, Did I get him? Yeah. <laughs> it takes more than that to kill him. That was the greatest. I love that. <laughs> he actually thought the... He actually thought the initial charge was like the beanbag. You know, like they have those rifle... I'm sorry, they have the shotguns that fire the beanbags or whatever. He thought it was like one of those. Like, I'm going to fire a beanbag charge at an orc. Nope, not at all. That one actually didn't kill him. That's a tough orc. We'll blow him in half with that one. Ooh, and we got a squig with that one, too. We got bonus points. I always judge the validity of a weapon by how many bonus kills you get with it. Got a couple people hanging out on the scaffolding. And since I don't want to be flanked and spanked, I'm just not in the mood right now. I'm going to be really, really honest. That is not something that is on my itinerary for the day. Getting spanked is one of those things that you really... You've got to get me a little bit kind of warmed up for it, I suppose. I mean, you've got to put in a little bit of pre-effort. And up until that point, I'm just absolutely going to deny you. And since since I'm already not in the mood, I feel like it's going to take too much effort for the orcs. The orcs aren't known for, like, tender touches or candlelight dinners anyway. So I feel like the probability of things coming out the way that I want them to is going to be pretty low. This room appears to be devoid of anything interesting. So let's just continue on our way. Break out the vengeance, just in case there's a big old stack of enemies in here at the start. There's not. But we can get rid of a couple of these guys fairly easily, so that's what I'm going to do. We've already got the gun out. We need to get the shell into that loader. Well, if I've already got the gun out, that doesn't appear as though it would be an excuse for like... <laughs> if you ever tried to use it in court, they'd be like, why did you shoot him? Well, I already had the gun out, I mean... <laughs> I don't see that flying with the magistrate. I always like that title better. We just call them judges here in the U.S. And I really liked, I like the fact that they're called magistrates elsewhere. That sounds a lot there. more official. I will place the charge on that shell. Well, then hop to it. Or was that me speaking? I can't tell the difference between all of these stoic manly men talking. So let's put that in right there. Now to move the shell into place. Now we're going to be showing off them... <laughs> We're showing off them glutes and that ability to push. We're definitely getting our action in here. They don't tell you this, but captain he's the captain's been using a lot of creatine lately. I mean, he's been using all kinds of supplements. He's been drinking weird green-colored drinks. He's been flying off the handle pretty easily. The orcs will feed it right into the gun's chamber. We cannot rely on luck for this, Sir Donus. We follow the shell up and make sure it reaches its destination. Aye. Now back to the lift. I'm definitely feeling as though with all of these supplements that he's taken, he's been kind of snappy with all of his cohorts as well. So I feel like he just needs like an outlet through which to exercise out all of that angst. In any case, hopefully that got it out of his system because honestly, I'm tired of filing the HR. Oop, free kills. And so now you see my ADD works to my favor here. Oh, shot his leg out from under. And you're down. Nope, you're not going anywhere. You thought you were leaving. You thought that that scaffold was going to take you someplace magical and shiny, but no indeed it took you to Boltersville. None of you are getting out of this. 
No, except me. Oh, never mind. You guys took- you guys stole my glory. I was trying to get everybody. I was trying to be that guy who's just acing everything in the co-op mission. And no. You gotta take- Yeah, how did I know that was gonna happen? Put out a grenade for their viewing pleasure, or at least for their imbibing pleasure. And if they don't get that sort of pleasure out of it, at least I will exude pressure. Like, whenever a grenade explodes, I feel as- Oh, you're already done. Let's go ahead and take care of him with an execution. And I'm going to click the left mouse as rapidly as I can, and we sawed him off at the shoulder. Very, very cool. But you couldn't resist. I mean, I feel like he was probably already dead at the point that the chainsaw went through his spine, but the extra punch was just for good measure to remind him that the Emperor does not approve of what he's doing. The Emperor is kind of like a grumpy parent. It's like, you know what? You're, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. It's the worst thing ever when your parents said that to you when you were a kid. Then again, I just kind of stopped caring after a while because I was a terrible child. <laughs> Like, people were like, you should do a Draw Your Life video log, and I was like, no, I wouldn't have any subscribers left if I did that. Believe me, you just don't even want to know. Just leave it all, just fill it in with your memory. If I told you, like, 10% of the stuff I did between the ages of, like, 17 and 24, it'd be an entertaining video log, but there wouldn't be anybody left. I'd be all alone tomorrow. <laughs> Looks like we've got some vengeance launchers. It seems like all of the fanfare they made about us getting a Vengeance Launcher, and also about getting the Stalker Bolter, it seems like that's diminished by the fact that they just have a giant box full of them now. I don't know if you guys get that impression from but that's the way I feel about it. It's just like, well, why put it in that crazy box to begin with, then? Just have us walk up on one of these and just be done with it. Ooh, a big room. I'm gonna bring the Stalker Bolter on this one. Let's earn ourselves some restraining orders, or some peace bonds, as they call them in other places. I don't feel like a peace bond would be... In the Warhammer 40k Grim Dark World of Grim Dark Grim Darkness, I don't feel like a peace bond would get much done. But like, listen, Orc, I have a peace bond here that says you have to stay 50 yards away from me. So? I don't care. <laughs> I don't get to use my Orc voice enough anymore now that I don't play Warhammer 40k on any sort of reasonable basis. And by that I mean I don't play it at all anymore because apparently once you get to college age, Everybody else is too busy, like, drinking and imbibing substances. And, to be fair, I spent a fair amount of my college experience doing that, but at the same time, I had the misfortune of being a lot older than everybody else in college, so it was kind of a weird situation where I felt as though I was interested in other things that other people weren't necessarily into. And that was kind of a glitch hack right there, but whatever, we'll take the... Are you, you're, never mind, they got me back, so if they're gonna cheat, I'm gonna cheat. That's my rule. Load that to humans to kill. Got me a spice marine. Oh, he's over there. I didn't even see him. Snipe him on out. He took a lot of shots to the face before he went down. That orc definitely had a hard chin on him. He was not the glass Joe of the orcish race. God, there was a game that ruined my childhood. Punch-Out. I played a lot of Punch-Out as a kid, and that was one of those games that really, you watch a little kid play Punch-Out and you learn just how good a little kid's reflexes are. When I was, I, there are things that I did in Super Punch-Out that I could never do again. At this age, I just give up. I'd be like, no, nope, my fingers don't work like that anymore. They have lost their dexterous nature. I've become lazy. I'm in my old age. I'm just crippled with carpal tunnel and everything else from work. I'm crippled with carpal tunnel and working <laughs> on the internet. It's just like, what are you even going to do anymore? My left hand essentially just doesn't work. It's just, I'm like, hey, hey, left hand, you want to do something right now? And he's like, eh, I'm a little tired, dude. I mean, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to make your elbow hurt a lot every time you move me. And the worst thing about Carpal Tunnel is that it's something like, I'm complaining about it right now. So anyways, just, just, just to get that irony out of the way in this diatribe, Carpal Tunnel is the wimpiest first world disease ever. Like, you're not allowed to complain about it to anybody. Like, if you tell anybody you have Carpal Tunnel, you instantly get made fun of. And so I feel as though it's just one of those things that I just hide it from everybody. I almost feel like a leper with it. I'm like, no. They're like, why are you holding your arm all curled? Like, don't ask me. I bumped it on a wall. Leave me alone. I fell down some stairs. <laughs> I like his shoulder adornment better. He's got wings. His skull has clearly found some Red Bull. Whereas mine is unfortunately ground bound. What weapon am I using right now? I'm going to use a stalker bolter. Oh, a bunch of little gits right there. I'm gonna shoot him. If I can aim prop. Oh, he turned around. I shot his friend and it was too much for him to bear. He's like, no! That's my friend! He was very, very upset by the whole thing. Orcs have a complex system of friendship. It mostly involves, like, biting and punching and taking each other's teeth. 
but at the same time, it is a friendship system nonetheless. Another purity seal. Does it actually add those to my armor? I don't see it adding them, but I can only assume it does. Fury now allows you to enter marksman mode. Time slows down, allowing you to play shots with lethal precision. Lethal. Use T to enter Fury mode, then left control. Ah, okay, that's self-explanatory. It makes us aim better. Right. Well, I can only assume that they're going to try and force me to aim better now. Every time they give you a new ability in a video game, they're like, guess what? You get to learn how to use this now. And grenaded. That didn't work out very well. I'm going to do some melee. I'm feeling a little bit punchy and slashy right now, so I think I'm going to give in to the urge. I'm going to allow myself to fall into the Berserker line. We're going to do some Space Wolf action here and just axe everything to death if we can. I don't see anything else. Let me put progress. it back. Leandros, get the shell into that loader. I will cover you. What does that say on the side of it? Only the Emperor is all. Mercy is a sign of weakness. <laughs> oh, Space Marines. I feel like there wouldn't be a whole lot of... Like, I don't think there's any Space Marine stand-up comedians. Or really, there might be Imperial ones. I mean, I've seen some pretty snarky lines. Let's go ahead and reload. And then once I do that, I'm going to try the Marksman mode. So Fury mode. And then let's try aiming here. Oh, there's a delay. That's a little bit obnoxious. So what they don't tell you is there's a delay in between when you're able to fire your bolter. Oh, God. And I've been blown up with a grenade. All the better. This is what happens when I focus on any task. Something always tries to kill me. Just the same as it ever was in 7th grade. Put a couple more rounds downfield. And I'm going to save that barrel right there for the next time a bunch of guys... Never mind, they used it for me. Disappointing, orcs. How dare you use my own tactics against me. That is far too adaptive for your kind. I'm going to put a grenade right there and just kind of hope that it doesn't hurt Sedonis. Or Leandris, or whoever. You know, they've all, they all ended us. Whatever us-laden suffix individual is pushing that shell into space, it's Leandris. I know it's Leandris. I'm just trying to be funny at this point, or at least semi-sarcastic. A couple more orcs down. Oh, and it's a knob. Oh, my God. I'm just going to try and escape. He can go and beat up my sergeant if he wants. Now that we've got him all nice and softened up, let's go ahead and chew him like a bad piece of gristle. Ooh, and straight into the mouth receptacle. I'd be interested to see if I can execute the little guys. That seems like it would be kind of an exercise in my overzealous nature, but it still seems like it would be kind of funny. Armor's holding out okay. I wonder if that's actually going to make it up there. We'll try. Because we are out of armor right now, so I'm going to go ahead and take cover. Even though on the box for the game, it's like, cover is for the weak. Well, I suppose that I'm weak. Incoming nades. We'll try and get clear of that. Saw up some of these little guys. Absolutely. Find an exit. Seems like there's a bunch of orcs stuck back in, in there. Let's get out of here before we blow ourselves up. I'm not interested in becoming a martyr. And after some gratuitous explosions... The Guardsmen will get their supplies now. Captain Titus. You are a man of your word, my lord. Thank you. What is your situation, Lieutenant? We're gathering our wounded and are heading to the Andrus habitation block to establish an outpost. With the cannon down, our support craft will land there. Very well. My battle brothers and I must secure any operational Warlord-class Titans before the Orcs can loot them. Good luck. I like the habitation sector, but I much prefer the cohabitation sector. Just being who I am. Let's see if... Wow, that didn't... That was woefully underperforming. Sigh. The orcs are running away, which is kind of a unique situation. And... Shazowie. 
It's a little strange. That guy's torso came off even though I blew up his feet. I'm not going to ask what course of explosive physics caused that to happen, but I'm just going to assume that they're correct there and just kind of roll with it. If you knows what I mean. This large area has me feeling a little bit nervous, like they're going to drop a boss on me or something. Then again, that was a hell of a bridge, by the way. That bridge right there is quite impressive. That's a bridge that inspires a certain sense of awe. Okay, and so now that we're refilled on just about everything, I'm gonna, we're almost there. The bolter seems to be the one thing that I never have enough of. Let's go with the stalker bolter for now. Feeling a little bit stocky at the moment. It's all good. Got my dwarf feeling hanging in there. Check the corners carefully because I have no desire to get shot in my back. Now that bridge is a testament to the might of the Imperium. The Adeptus Mechanicus are masterful architects. Their work outlived all of them. What in Hillman's name is that? Did the Lieutenant not say these tracks went to the complex housing the Titans? That thing is a battering ram. This kind of seems like an exercise in futility, but it's still kind of fun for some reason. An exercise in excessive violence, I guess. If you're wondering who Gulliman is, Gulliman is the Primarch of the Ultramarines. The Primarch is basically like the big King High Tuna. He's that guy. He's cloned from, I'm sorry, not cloned, that's an improper word. He was created from the genetic material of the Emperor himself. Those who play against Ultramarines a lot have affectionately named him Roboat Gurleyman because his name is like Robois Gulliman or something like that. I don't know, I've never heard him called anything but Roboat Gurleyman from among his adoring peers. I'm gonna put some DACA downfield, because we are definitely receiving some DACA, and it is a well-accepted fact of DACA physics that if you receive DACA, you are then enabled to exude it back. The amount of DACA in a given circumstance is neither diminished nor gained. Shoot me again. I've never heard that request before. It's kind of an odd request, but in any case, I'll take it. Pick up a little bit of ammunition. Is there anything hiding back? Oh, that's right. There was an audio recording back there the last time I played through. There are audio recordings, so they're all in little cat machines. And if you can find them, you find audio recordings that add a little bit of fluff to the game world. Just in case you were wondering why there's, like, no collectibles and I'm not looking in corners or anything, it's because I picked up a lot of them while I was running around. Once we get to, like, the mid to late game, I think that's about the time that I started playing multiplayer in this and ceased playing single player. At which point, I'll probably start listening to the audio logs so that you guys can get a little bit more of a feel for the lore behind the game. I mean, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to Warhammer 40k, which is weird because I don't play the game a whole lot, but I really do enjoy the lore. Like, I do read Dan Abnett and some of those other writers who have done things like Let the Galaxy Burn. Although, I think Let the Galaxy Burn was a collection which had, like, William King and Orson Scott Card and a couple other people writing Warhammer 40k professional fanfic, I suppose. And that looks like a good opportunity for an explosive. Some opportunities just look like they require explosives. You could say that for the 4th of July, really any holiday to be honest. I feel like most holidays are now separated with a severe lack of explosives. Every holiday should just be bolstered by a nice additive of high explosive. In any case, I think this is where I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Actually, no, let's do the storyline and then we'll see what comes. Oh, that's not where I'm going. Never mind. It had skulls on it, so I assume that's where I was going. Never mind, it was a 40-yard fake out. Sorry, guys. We're going to keep on playing until we get to the next checkpoint. <laughs> my, my, my. The amount of mistakes I make on this channel is simply mind-boggling. And I've almost thought about making a video log to address the fact, because I get a lot of people that are like, be more pro, dude. Be more pro. And not really interested. Not really interested. Takes entirely too much effort. I mean, way too much. I would rather just be kind of jocular and have fun with you guys. I mean, I feel like if I took the effort it would take to be pro, I would be a lot less just conversational. Which some people are probably like, good, you talk too much, I hate you, you douche. Which, believe me, I get those emails on a daily basis. But at the same time, 
I kind of like talking. That's the whole reason I started LPing. It's because I just wanted to talk to myself while playing video games and then hopefully bring other people along for the ride and experience the subtle joy that is the insanity of the inner confines of my mental sanctum. I don't know what you guys are shooting at, but stop murdering and get up here. It's time to just teleport. Now to stop this ram. Time to impact. No more than six minutes. Time enough. Okay, so this is where I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Warhammer 40k Spice Marines. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.